Hey, next Monday is the first official day on the job for the new Chancellor of New York City Schools, Misha Ross Porter. She's the first black female to serve in that position and a product of the New York City public school system. Outgoing Chancellor Richard Carranza shared some words of wisdom with her. Take a listen. My advice to, to uh, Chancellor uh, Porter is do you, be you. Uh, lead with the heart that you've led in every one of the assignments that you've had in New York City. Continue to keep the children at the forefront. Remember, you serve the children. Everyone else should be helping you serve the children, and you should be helping them as they serve children. Incoming Chancellor Misha Ross Porter joining me now live this morning. Good morning to you, and welcome for your first appearance here on the Pick 7 Morning News. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. Good, good morning. And by the way, congratulations on the new position. Not only are you the first black woman to hold this position, but you also took a very non-traditional route to becoming the New York City Schools Chancellor, right? Tell us a little bit about the journey. We want to get to know you this morning. Well, I think for New Yorkers, they probably say it was a super traditional route, uh, and I think that's what people are excited about. I was a teacher. I was an assistant principal. I was a principal, superintendent, um, executive superintendent, and now this. And so I've, I've worked at every level of the system, and I think uh, for folks in New York City, that that's the traditional route uh, mm. that the people are looking for. And because you came up in the system, because you've worked in the system, you know it very well. And so I want to get mm -hmm. into some things right now, because as a product of the public school system, you witnessed yourself and you talked about a little mm -hmm. bit institutional racism in the school system mm -hmm. at an early mm -hmm. age. Right. Tell us a little bit about that, what you witnessed along your journey. I mean, I talked a little bit about experiences I had with right opportunities. Uh, you know, when I, when I was in high school, I, I, I'm very proud to be a Queens vocational technical high school graduate, first woman to graduate from the Plum and Shop program. But in those days, we were very tracked, um, and we were tracked to our specific. Uh, you know, if you were in a voc tech class, you took regular classes. If you were in business or computers, you took honors classes. And I had an amazing teacher, Mr. Glober who said, you, you don't belong here, you belong in honors English. Uh, and the first thing they saw was a plumber, plumbing shop student and moved me back. And I went right to my principal, Mr. Serber, and he put me right in that class and mm. I, I was able to excel. There you go. I mean, that's a story right there, you know, and that brings me mm -hmm. to this 2019 report. Not sure if you saw it by UCLA, which revealed that New York City schools is among the most segregated in the mm -hmm. nation. You know, Chancellor Carranza would often talk about this, that the schools isolate students not only by race, but by socioeconomic status, right? Mm -hmm. How do you plan to tackle that? So I'm not going to shy away from that reality. Our system is segregated, and it is very real. And the Chancellor, Chancellor Carranza, has started to do some real important work of interrupting those systems, and I look forward to continuing that work. Is there a specific plan, though, that you have in place to kind of deal with that? I think the first thing that as I think about us getting back into school and opening school mm. is really looking at curriculum and how students see themselves and their experiences and their learning experiences every day. Yesterday I was with the Chancellor Student Advisory Council and they asked me these same questions. Yeah. And, and one of the things they were really interested in is, is how we show up in our learning spaces. What does our curriculum and what we're learning look like? Um, but in addition, we just have to really create opportunities and access for all students across right. our system. Yeah, and you know, you're the mother of a 10th grader, right? So I'm sure that can yes. impact too what you're hearing on the ground from the student level with your own child in the public school system. How will you use that information to arm you and inform you on your day-to-day -day work when you officially take over? Well, I, I'm making the same decisions that every New York City public school parent is making. I had to make a decision about whether to send my child in person, and I did, and, and she was super excited about that. And now she's looking forward to getting back. And so I think what I bring to the table is I, I'm, I am grappling every day as a parent, um, but also as the system level leader mm -hmm. with the, the, the same things that every New York City parent is grappling with each day. Understood. You know, you've gotten a whole heck of a lot of support from principals, teachers, parents, local leaders. I want to play a little bit of what some of them had to say. I was just filled with so much emotion and so much joy because Misha Ross Porter is a friend. She is a sister. She's going to be the one that's going to fight, that's going to advocate. She has really tried to hear what is going on in the grounds so that she could help the Bronx and especially in the area of the digital divide. All right, digital divide, right? That's a big one. Yep. What do you see as you as you hear the positives as the biggest challenge facing the education system as you take over? 
So I think that as we head into, you know, our, our new school year, right, because we, we are getting ready for that, um, how do we leverage what we've learned from the pandemic? We, we In terms of the digital divide, we've gotten over 500,000 devices into the hands of our students. And so that was to address this moment. Mm -hmm. But what we need to really think about is how it plays into our school system going forward. And so creating a really new innovative system that we walk into in September. I like the sound of that. And while you heard the positives, I do have to touch upon some of the critics mm -hmm. as well, right? There are already mm -hmm. critics who say you don't have the right mm -hmm. amount, amount of experience. Uh, you know uh, they're out there, right? There's always a critic mm -hmm. somewhere that say you don't have the experience to lead the largest school system. And there's also some reported complaints about you violating conflicts of interest rules. How do you address that going in? So I will say uh, 20 plus years as an educator is all the experience that I need and, and in terms of uh, conflicts, I think there was a, a issue about a party um, and, and the party was a celebration not just for me, but for the Bronx. And so um, I'm looking forward to continuing to do great work um, and move our system forward with all that I know and I've learned from being a student in it and being a leader in it. And I hate to, you know, put a damper on things, mm -hmm. but Mayor de Blasio's turn is coming to an end soon, which could mean yep. that a new administration comes in and they appoint a new chancellor. Are you looking at that or are you just tackling this full steam ahead? I'm tackling this full steam ahead. I'm looking at the next 10 months. There is so much to do that that's all I have time to really think about. Yeah, that, and high school students, this is big news yesterday, starting in-person classes on the 22nd. So I want to talk to you about this new PIX11 News Nation Emerson College poll. It actually found that 51% of polled voters believe that high school should reopen, in line with what you're mm -hmm. saying, right? 49% believe they should wait until next year. So what adjustments um, are being made to making sure that all students get caught up after being on remote learning for most of the year, right? Because there's this big fear from a lot of parents and even teachers who are saying, well, the students may, may have been left behind. So I think what the first thing is to do is to, to assess where our students are, but not just their academic spaces, right? Like there, there's, there's the academic gap, but there's also the social emotional gap. And so we really need to address our students in their whole selves and, and how we get them back to school, how we get them back to school feeling well, feeling welcomed, feeling safe, feeling encouraged, but mm -hmm. also that we identify what their academic needs are by assessing their learning gaps and addressing them moving forward. So, so I'll when, tell you really quickly from please. the pandemic. Yep. We've definitely we've gotten tools that help us to really identify specific learning needs that individual students have, and um, we're looking forward to using that as we think forward. So, looking ahead, then, because parents just want to be clear on this, even though the mayor touched upon it yep. yesterday, that school year in the fall, everything back open, everybody back into school, in a classroom, no remote learning. In the fall, really using the health medical recommendations, making the best decisions to open as fully as we possibly can. Okay, and so what does that mean for something like summer school? That means that summer school we're in the process of, of planning for, and so it will probably be a combination of remote and in-person, but definitely I'm looking for summer school to be the launch into our new school year. Understood, and lastly, before we get to our favorite thing, which is rapid fire, I wanna just quickly touch upon remote learning and sports, right? Because sports was a big thing. A lot of kids, man, they really wanna get back on the fields and the courts. So if you're remote, you can still play sports. Is there, a, is there an issue there? No, our remote students are our students. Our in-person students are our students. Um, and, you know, families made the decisions that they made that they thought were best for their families mm -hmm. um, about remote or in-person. And, and we honor that and respect that. So there is, no, there is no decision that parents have to make for next year, right? They don't have to select remote versus in-person. At this time, there's not a decision to be made. Understood. All right, are you ready for this? I'm ready. This I'm is gonna, the fun part. This is the fun part. I'm bringing <laughs> yes, Betty yes, into the conversation Chance here LaCour, because congratulations. We, so nice to see you. We are ready for the Thank rapid you. fire. This is our favorite thing to do around here on Pix 11. So first thing is first. Okay, best slice to grab a, a best place to grab a slice of pizza. Oh gosh, Gino's in Far Rockaway or in Mott Avenue. Okay. Oh, wow. Think I'm really best. Sorry. Okay. All Gotta right. go to the roots. How about this? You are a woman of many talents. I understand when you went to Queens Vocational Technical High School, you majored in plumbing? Yes. <laughs> really? Absolutely. Yes. Not only majored, but was one of the first, two of us, myself and my friend Flora, the first two women to graduate from the plumbing shop program. Look at okay. you. Central Park, Prospect Park, Van Cortland Park. Van Cortland Park? Ah, uh, <laughs> you know, I went to Manhattan College right across the street from it. Hands down, one of my favorite parks in, in okay. Yes. There is a controversy brewing that California has best bagels. Best place to get a bagel in New York City, and do you get it with a schmear? 
Uh, you absolutely get it with a schmear. And I like to go on Westchester Avenue to my favorite little spot, um, which I can't remember the name of because I'm getting old, but Westchester Avenue <laughs> in okay. the Bronx. Sorry, <laughs> age before memory. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I understand, you know, because you do have a daughter, what's their favorite place to go and have a, a bite to eat with your daughter? Uh, we love to go to Ripe in Mount Vernon, which is a little spot with great Jamaican food. Um, oh. Also locally, uh, Havana Central in the Bronx. Oh, oh my goodness, places. Havana Central, their yes. drinks. Uh, best place or favorite place to visit in New York City that you have never visited? Oh, gosh, you're going to get me in trouble. It's uh, okay. The Statue of Liberty. I've never really? visited the Statue of Field Liberty. Field trip. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're taking you there. We're All taking right. you there. And I'm going to have to call my elementary school and find out what happened. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and before we have to go, I do want to ask you, what was the first thing that you did once you found out mm -hmm. you were going to be chancellor? I cried a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, the first thing I did was I, I called my mommy. Um, and she was so excited and so proud uh, as an educator herself. And so, you know, I am just really looking forward to doing this great work for New York City um, and excited to be chosen and, and really honored for this right. opportunity. To we love, this we position, like so. the sound of that. And you know what? Yep. I always call my mother. She's the first person I call for everything. That's true. Who else is there to call? Hey, congratulations. <laughs> Absolutely. Welcome. And uh, you're welcome back here on the Pixar More yeah, News anytime. Soon, okay? Thank you so much. I will. Thank you. Take care. Okay, Good take to care. Speak with you. Congratulations.